Okay, the structure, the home, faces east. The front door faces east. This is a condominium. This is the electric meter. By today's standards, we should have two grounding rods. I don't know where I'm getting the second ground from, but we should have two grounding rods. Um, panels located on the wall. Power is below grade. Panel is sealed. This is, the, this is, this is your meter. Uh, nothing really exciting here, except that we don't know where our second ground is. I'm going to reiterate just a few things here. Uh, the water heater TMP drain line is discharges higher than 10 inches because that won't be in the video, the water heater video. This won't be in the air handler video, but the secondary drain line for the upstairs unit does not discharge in an obvious location. So those are all duplications. And we, we have that. I'm a duplicator. Which is kind of scary. I just saw. Uh, oh, that's called multiples. I'm a duplicator. I'm not a multiple. <laughs> All right. So this is inside the north wall. This is the electric service panel. Okay. And we're also in the electrical in the garage. So that's GFCI. That is GFCI. It does not protect the overhead door. <clears throat> it does work on this receptacle outlet in the garage just not the ceiling it works on this receptacle outlet that does not have an in-use cover so we have that and then the garage overhead fluorescent lamp should have a protective prism cover should but that's not why we're here we're here for this bad boy okay Breaker box, let's call it what you will. Electric service panel, I like to call it that. You can go to Home Depot or any other box store, for example, electronics supply house, they call this the electric load center, and that's what it is. It's 150 amps, it's on the north interior wall. This is called bundling. See right here, this is L1, L2, L1, L2, and the main ground, and the main neutral. And they're coming in, they're copper to copper. <clears throat> we don't know where this box is going to go, so we have these large knockouts. Some people call them twist outs, go on what you will. So that way we can install any cabinet, just about in any structure, and, and do it right. And then we have all these smaller knockouts. You see the smaller twist outs? Okay, all over here, 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 here. Those are for these. Those are for these. So when you bring them all in here, it's you're only supposed to bring in two at a time. So you bring all these cables in here, that's called bundling. And it's called the skin effect. And it's very common. I hate discounting my work. I really do hate discounting my work. But even the illustration that I'm going to bake into your inspection report is kind of apologetic for it. It says this is a common thing. And it is common. It's here. And you know, this is Rover, you know, on the west side of downtown uh, in my mind <clears throat> my orientation I live on the east side of downtown and just about every house between the east and the west side of downtown the majority of the homes I inspect have this issue if everybody jumped off a bridge did you jump off a bridge I don't know are you gonna get that fixed I don't know I would never dissuade my client from seeking perfection but sometimes the cost or the, the cure is worse than the ill and I'm, again, I'm not dissuading you from seeking perfection. I'm just saying it's probably not going to happen. L1 and L2 should have plastic neoprene protective boots over these. Okay, If you don't know those are hot, you don't belong in this cabinet. I get that. But that's what they're supposed to have. Okay, It's to protect people from getting in there and grabbing themselves a good old dose of electricity. And this right here, this is your main neutral. And it's supposed to be wrapped with four wraps of white tape so that you know that that's the main neutral. Now, if you don't know that's the main neutral, you don't belong in this cabinet in the first place. I get that. But it's supposed to be wrapped in white tape. These white hots, these white hots, okay, they're supposed to be wrapped in black tape. And if you don't know these are hot, you don't belong in this cabinet. But they're all the same, all the same, all the wrong. So <laughs> we should have black tape on these. We should have white tape on this. We should have protective booties. I'm telling you about the bundling. 
What else we got in here? Stuff. We got all kinds of stuff. Well, okay, let's get the good stuff out of the way. I guess it's good, but these are called stackable breakers. Some people call them chew. Sometimes home inspectors get upset when they see these. All right, but if we look at the diagram over here by the manufacturer, we see that stackable breakers are allowed. So that's a good thing. Not a good thing. It's just a thing. But it's not a bad thing. So let's go for bad things. Okay, about time. Come on, bud. Cables are not supposed to be touching the cabinet cover. You're not supposed to have a gap between the cabinet and the wall larger than an 18th of an inch. It's fire blocking. When this cabinet fits on top of here, you see that gap right in there? You think the fire just jump right on around that? I do. So I'm not supposed to have that gap there. How about this one? Screwed in place. Screws are faster and tighter. I get that. You ever build a tree house? And try to take a tree house down. Nails have much more sheer strength. Nails are faster, but they don't have sheer strength. They don't have the tensile strength. They pop. They break. So if this structure was to experience a tornado, for example, I get it. You've had a bad day. A tornado doesn't blow up your house. But if this cabinet had been nailed in place rather than screwed in place, it'd stand a better chance of staying in place. That's why they have rules like that. Inside of this cabinet, we're supposed to have, it doesn't matter how you write it, the crappy handwriting, but you're supposed to have the bonding location. I don't have a bonding location here. I know that we got two. Okay, this goes to the grounding rod we saw at the earlier part of the video. This goes to the second ground. I don't know where it's bonded at. It's supposed to be listed so that the uh, electrician doesn't have to go hunting. It might be in the laundry. It might be at the water heater. We don't know where it is. So it's supposed to be labeled so the electrician can chase that down. And then these... Okay, are neutrals. When you read the code, it's kind of confusing, but you can actually double lug neutrals. Two wires underneath one screw. Two wires underneath one screw. All right. Three wires underneath one screw? No. You cannot triple lug a, a ground wire. And neutrals, okay? And the reason why you can double lug a ground is because they're only supposed to carry car current in an emergency. But the neutrals continuously carry current. And so they are considered and are hot. So you're not supposed to double lug a neutral. You're not supposed to, well, they're hot anytime the circuit's completed. And these are hot continuous. This goes to a switch. And then once that switch is completed, this becomes hot. So you're not supposed to double lug neutrals. You're not supposed to triple lug grounds. Wires are not supposed to touch the cabinet. You're not supposed to have a gap in the cabinet. You're not supposed to have screws holding your cabinet in. The bonding location is supposed to be labeled. You're not supposed to have bundling. The neutral is supposed to be wrapped with white tape. The white hot is supposed to be wrapped with black tape. are supposed to have protective covers in here. And we got some sawdust and dookie in there. Here's another thing. This is called handwriting. Okay? This is supposed to be printed. This information is supposed to be printed. This is printing. See what it says? This is danger. That's printing. This is handwriting. I didn't make this up. I didn't make any of this up. I'm a mockingbird. All right. The manufacturer sent out pre-printed notices for these things. So, I mean, there we go. Now, also, what I've noticed is that the, according to this, the handwriting is inaccurate. It's inaccurate. Also, according to this, and just assuming the best, just assuming the best, these are the condensing unit circuit breakers, and they're overfused. The downstairs one, which they call number two, which is wrong, okay, the downstairs one should be 20 amps max, and this is 25. The uh, upstairs one, I think it's 35 amps max, that's 50. 50 right there, and speaking of food, it's 150 amps, saved by the bell. Good home, this is bad. I don't buy my home, my car warranty. My car warranty. I get to extend it. Oh, thank you, Vanessa. So, that's the electric service pack. The air conditioning units are overfused.